What's up guys, and welcome to the first annual holiday special on my channel. Today, I wanted to get into the Christmas spirit with you all by playing the Christmas event of one of my favorite games of all time, RuneScape. I used to play RuneScape all the way back to when I was in 4th grade with all my friends, and it may actually be one of the first serious RPG experiences I actually had. I kinda off and on play it today, but I still love coming back for the holiday events and checking out what's new from time to time. Let's cut the chit chat though, and get into the event. As you're exploring the world, you stumble upon Santa, who set up a huge portal, and has set up a lion in front for some reason. You ask a festively dressed dwarf man what's going on, and he tells you that the line is to get into the Nutcracker Pub, one of the most exclusive drinking establishments in all of the lands. This dwarf's name is Gus Mistletoad, and he ends up telling you that he has a problem that you may be able to help him with. He says he desperately wants to get into the Nutcracker, but has failed for the last 21 years straight. Apparently his dwarf-like stature has always hindered his chances, but thinks that with your help he can finally manage. You agree, but before you know it, he sends you up to Santa himself to ask for not just one ticket, but two. Thing is, Gus can't ask for himself, because he's lost so many times that Santa wants nothing to do with him anymore. You're forced to make up a lie on the spot to get two tickets from Santa by telling him the other one is for your friend who's elite through his hobby of finding homes for abandoned kittens running a little too long. Incredibly, Santa buys this excuse and gives you two tickets, but specifies that they're for different times so that no shenanigans can be played. This puts a huge wrench in Greg's plans, as this means you'll both need to make it to the finals yourselves to even start working together. Greg tells you that he believes he can do it and says he knows a way of cheating that may help him get there, but it'll be close. In line for the competition are also some possible competitors of yours. First is Saunders, who seems to be a weird strongman who decided to put a bucket over his head for some reason due to the fact that if he can't see his enemies, then his enemies must not be able to see him. Next is Elson, a rich nobleman who tells you that he hasn't slept in 12 days from training so hard, but has brought his pet monkey Gizmo with him as an ace in the hole to put him over the top. Third will be Bobby, who appears to be a full-grown man who believes he's the son of a gnome. He's even dressed in his own gnome costume to boot. When you should have questioned this, you're told that it's an incredibly rude topic to bring up, and you don't push any further. Fourth is Paula, who tells you that she's obsessed with going fast, and that she carries around a massive clock in order to keep track of just how fast she is. And finally, we get to the toughest competitor of them all, a goose in a Santa hat. Now that we've met all the competition, you make your way to the portal, but Santa stops you and makes you enter a riddle beforehand. The riddle is, what do you get when you bump into a vampire in the winter? I'll give you a few seconds to think of the answer. It's Frostbite, if you didn't guess that already. The first round is a cool off where you and your competitors have bags strapped to your backs, and to win, you'll have to fill everybody else's bags to 100 pieces before they can fill yours. The competition is fierce, and the going gets tough, but in the end, you manage to outdo your peers. Before being allowed to the next round, however, you're met with another riddle. This one is... Their body is run from head to toe, and they love to be cold. What am I speaking of? I'll give you another second to think. The answer is a snowman. The next tournament is a gingerbread competition, where you and your foes are tasked with filling up your respective buckets with undamaged gingerbread you find laying around the room. You gain points for all these you collect, but you lose points for any broken ones that end up in your bucket. You also have the option of sabotaging your enemies by filling theirs with the broken ones, but they have the same ability to do this to you as well. In addition to this, a random man who's crawling around the floor for some reason will help the enemies fill your bucket with junk unless you kick some sense into him. Again, the competition is grueling, and any mistake will cause you to crumble, but you don't bake under the pressure and end up cooking your competition. To proceed, however, you must answer the final riddle, which is, what is tall when it's young, but short when it's old? I'll give you one more second. The answer is a candle. Now onto the final round where beforehand you meet up with Gus and congratulate each other on your success. Gus tells you all you need to do now is make it with him to the final two competitors and take a dive to let him win. You begrudgingly agree and are soon introduced to the final showdown, which is a massive free for all snowball fight. To win this, you need to take down your competitors by scoring as many hits on them as you can with regular snowballs or if you see one, a yellow snowball, which hits for way more points than normal. This snowball fight is one for the ages, and your opponents nearly freeze you solid with their skills, but you manage to shatter them in the end. It's all down to you and Gus now, and the ref stops the action to set up a 1v1 showdown. 
Greg is putting on a front and acting extremely cocky so as not to arouse any suspicions at your plan, but he almost slips up when he mistakes a noise for the ref starting the fight. Instead of hitting you, he throws a snowball right at the ref's face and nearly gets himself knocked out of the competition, but in the end, the ref allows the contest to continue. It's here that you're given the choice of going on with the plan or backstabbing Greg and taking the win for yourself. Since it's Christmas, I decided to let Greg win. But to my surprise, he pulled out a yellow snowball that must have been filled with lead or something as it knocked me out cold. Luckily, the ref congratulates Greg and tells him that in addition to his ticket for the Nutcracker Pub, he also gets a plus one ticket too, and Greg being a good sport, chooses you in that place. You end up getting dragged into the pub as you're still asleep, but when you awake, the bartender tells you to go and check on Greg as he looks like he's acting a bit odd. When you approach Greg, he seems absolutely wasted on the mulled wine and spiked eggnog they have there, and after only a few seconds of talking, he nearly passes out. You step away a bit concerned, but the bartender laughs and says there wasn't even any alcohol in Greg's drinks, and that he may have just gotten too excited to realize. For all your efforts, you're rewarded a huge collection of everything from Christmas poppers to a bunch of other outfits. You even get a full bag of coal and a copy of Santa's own list. That, my friends, is the conclusion of our little Christmas tale. It's been a pleasure hanging with you all today, and I look forward to our next holiday special. I really appreciate all the support you guys get in the channel. Every nice comment and subscriber means a lot, and I love showing you guys all these cool games. All that's left to do now is to drink some eggnog and wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.